pricks. Well, they, don't, they know we're here, so they're shutting up all the gates. Why are you shutting the gates for, bro? What they got to hide here? What they got to hide? If they eat, drinking dairy is so normal, eating cows is so normal, why they, why they got to hide here? Why don't they like cameras here? You know, the security guards are on the phones, they're worried. Like if we were at a strawberry farm or some crop field, you think they'd be as worried? Shutting the gates and, oh, we're doing something wrong here. We're doing something morally wrong at some, you know, wheat farm where they grow wheat for bread. They're really worried here that we're gonna expose something. Those big truck containers are filled with blood, guts, and skin. Can we have a tour, bro? Are we allowed to have a tour of the slaughterhouse? No? Why not? What have they got to hide? What have they got to hide? Why can't we have a tour? You're not doing any tours today of the kill floor? Any tours today? Looks like they're not doing any tours, any public tours. Interesting, that. Might not be good for business. I'm sure you're allowed to go to strawberry farms and go picking for strawberries yourself. We can't go have a tour of the slaughterhouse and see what happens on the kill floor? I wonder why. Why are they so secretive here? So this is Kelly. Yeah. yeah. And can you just explain what this place, where we are right now? Yeah, so we're, we are in Tideford. Yeah. Um, so we're on the outskirts of Plymouth. Yeah. Um, and we're a small multi-species abattoir. Okay. Um, so we cater for farmers, smallholders and butchers. Steady my girl, she's gonna dip. <laughs> so let's put this on. We're gonna actually go inside mm -hmm. and check out the, the carcasses that have been cut open and see some CCTV footage of the actual slaughter process. So the smallholders will drop the anim their animals off here yep. and you offered the service to them of killing them. Yeah? Yes, yeah, so we would slaughter, butcher, pack, label, um, but we actively encourage um, farmers and smallholders to come in and watch their livestock process because a lot of people think that it's all blood and guts and gore and panic. Yeah. Whereas that's not the case. Yeah. Um, well, not the case in our plant. I can't yeah. speak for every plant. Mm -hmm. um, my dad's a fridge engineer by trade. Yeah. Um, and he's seen incidences in other slaughterhouses, big commercial units. Yeah. Where he's just come home and been absolutely mortified. Traumatized. But, yeah. It's not the first time I've been in a slaughterhouse, by the way. No, that's all right. <laughs> Dip, but I think it, that would do um, more damage than this than you Can we come in for a tour, mate? Sorry? Can we come in for a tour? Yeah. A tour of the kill floor? Is it? Not up to you, mate. Not up to you? He's kind of smirking in his face like he thinks the concept of a tour of a slaughterhouse is ridiculous. Like as if that would happen. But why? Why not? Why aren't they just open to the public to see where their food is coming from? But we want to be the exception to that rule. Okay. Um, we were farmers before we bought the abattoir okay. um, and we would like every animal here to be treated how I would have wanted my livestock to be treated. Mm. Um, the care and attention is what we, like, you know, we're very strict and stringent. So I guess like you would be minimising stress before they're slaughtered and yeah. you know, making sure they're not murdered in front of each other and yes. that sort of thing. So through here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this is our cattle race. So we've got a door here that swings out sideways. Yeah. So the cattle will come round up the cattle race and then you've got two check gates. Okay. So the cattle can't see anything in front. In front of each other, yeah. Yeah. So this is our small stun pen. So this is where um, we use the electric to stun pigs and we shoot the sheep with a captive bolt. Um, a lot of people opt to stun sheep with electric. Is it a uh, Dead fork. Tongs, yeah. yeah, I've yeah. seen those before, yeah. Um, and then that, that essentially will pick the animals yeah, up. Yeah, so we've got the shackles there. So what we do then is once the animal is stunned and unconscious, um, we shackle the hind leg, they're hoisted up onto the rail, mm -hmm. and then they are pushed through the check gates, which goes behind them. Yeah. And then the slaughtering happens, so that's the bleeding phase, yeah. happens the other side of the gate. Do you have any connection with the animals before they get killed? Yes, yeah, sometimes th there's only, there's once where I haven't been able to do my job. Yeah. And we had um, 
there's a, a lovely, lovely elderly lady called Mrs. Dent. Yeah. Um, and she used to have little black Berkshire pigs. Okay. And they, they came in on a Monday night. So we like to have the livestock in the night before. Yeah. Because obviously being picked out from their friends, put in a big shiny metal box and rattled around for a while, then they rock up somewhere they don't know. Yeah. Can be very stressful. Uh -huh. So we like to have them in the night before. They can have, have a lie down, have a mooch, have a drink, have a sleep. Um, so it minimizes stress. So we mm. like to do that. Um, but yes, um, these people came in on the Monday and they were just the most adorable things I've yeah. ever met in my life. Yeah. Um, and open, open, so it came to Tuesday morning, time for slaughter, opened the door, it's like, come on my biddies, and they, they, they just followed. And I was, did it there in the pen, and I just said, Dad, I can't do it. Sorry, the sheep and pigs sheep and pigs. Here, yeah. and this is where they're They bled. get bled out in here. Yeah. And what do the, do, do the people keep the blood? Usually? No, no, we process it as um, a category two animal byproduct. Yeah. So we take the blood up to a biodigestion plant in Hullsworthy, where they render it all down and they make um, electricity out of it. Wow. Yeah, a lot of places. I've just actually never heard. It. I've never heard that before in my life. That's really. We try not to waste anything and try and be as environmentally friendly as possible. So although it's a bit of pain in the backside, but. You don't want to waste any of the no, animal. No. Okay. And is this just down here? Oh my God. Just can't do it. And he goes, that's all right. He said, I'll, I'll do it. You, you go on round. So, so you would be on the kill floor usually doing the, the, yes, the hands-on so, yeah. stuff? Yeah. So I do all of it. And I think that's where the small units vary very massively in mm. comparison to the big commercial units is the people who are responsible for the animal welfare yeah. are on the floor doing the job. Okay. Whereas in the big plants, you know, they just have line operatives. Yeah. These people aren't, they're, you know, they haven't reared their own livestock necessarily. Um, they're just seen as units. Yeah. So, it's, you know, you've got to process so many units an hour to be profitable. Whereas here, if it takes 10, 15 minutes for a pig to walk out of a trailer, it takes 10, 10 15 okay. minutes. You don't rush them along or cause no. them any stress. Um, so that is our bleed pit. Okay. So um, that's from where it's been, been washed through. So this is our cattle knocking box. Knock box, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've got the options um, in this box. We can either shoot from the front or I can cl you can climb up the side and shoot from above. Okay. Which I can show you on the CCTV okay. later on um, yep. of, of how, how we do it. Um, once the animal is shot and unconscious, pull the little lever, you might want to back. Opens up, rolls out onto the floor. And then what we'll often do is shackle the front leg um, just to make sure that the, the, the animal is in the right yeah. position for bleeding. Um, and then we perform a vertical chest stick so they bleed out more flock quicker. Okay. I just want to know from your own emotional, psychological perspective, have you had to detach? Yes. Yeah, sometimes. Um, we had a cow and calf come in. This was about three, four years ago now. And... Um, the lady who booked them in, and she said, now the calf is small. Yeah. And I said, how small? And she said, well, the calf is still suckling. Yeah. Um, but the cow was passing on um, a genetic, like early onset osteoarthritis. Okay. So as the calves grew older and got bigger, mm -hmm. they were suffering. Yeah. So what she wanted to do, she identified through, you know, veterinary intervention, that it was this cow that was passing on the gene. Yeah. So she brought both of them down, because the longer she left it, that calf would then start to, you know, to suffer. Mm -hmm. um, so she brought the cow and calf down. And the calf, yeah, he must have only been about six months old. Mm. So he was quite, he was quite small. Mm -hmm. um, and it was at that point, you know, something that I had to sort of, you know, my other slaughterman at the time, he turned around and was like, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. And that's the time where you have to say, okay, that's fine, but I'm doing it for the welfare of the animal because other than that, mm. that animal is going to go on and suffer. Okay. And this is our beef splitting sauce, so just mind, mind your head. It splits them completely vertically down? Yeah. yeah. Because um, every um, beef animal has to have the spinal cord removed. Um, and so that's for risk of BSE. Yeah. So if we have to... What is BSE? It's mad cow disease. Mad cow disease, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, that all has to be removed. Totally normal. Right. Yeah, nothing going on back here that's, you know, out of the ordinary. What does it smell? Smells like 
a, a rotting corpse that's been covered in feces, like a urine mixture. It's, it's horrible. So I see in that instance, maybe there's a different context because of the animal may, you know, could be going into some suffering as they grow, yeah. but that's not always the context. So no, no, you would have to be, uh, you, so um, you'd have to sort of emotionally detach from, you know, the someone that you're taking the life from. So you'd have like, for, like, could you explain how you do that psychologically? Um, I think, I think the difference is, is you, you go in and you've, you've got a job to do and you, well, we alter our sort of management, our handling of the animals depending on their behaviour and their body language. Mm. Like, for example, the cattle behind us, mm. this one here, he's a little Devon, he was hand reared on a bucket because mm. he was born premature. Yeah. And so for him, you know, we would, tomorrow morning, when we go to, to walk him in, we'd open the gate, hand on his bum, walk on, you know, whereas the big cattle at the mm. back who were a bit flighty and yeah. we've known them before to be yeah. aggressive, yeah. Um, not just here, but on their homestead. Um, what we would do is get everyone out of the way, open everything up and let them run up together as a yeah. pair to, to, to minimize stress into the cattle race. Um, so that's, that's how we manage it is by and that sort of gives you that makes that settles some of the emotional discomfort with you know yeah i mean no one i don't like killing things i don't think i think i don't think anyone should but you don't so you don't feel that it's a moral thing to do at the end of the day but you're trying to offer the i'm i'm why i'm trying to offer an alternative Mm. so for people who care about where their food comes from they care about their animals there has to be somewhere to offer that service. Mm. So here is our um, inspection room. These are captive bolts that we use. Are they, are they the, okay. So yep. that's a spent cartridge. Yep. Um, but these, these are what we use for stunning. So this bolt here, um, what it does is the cartridge goes in here. Yeah. And then it, this is effectively your safety. So you pop it forward. And then when you pull the, the trigger, the, um, the combustion inside the chamber here at the back forces the bolt out. How far does the bolt come out? It comes out to about here. And then inside is full of loads of little rubber rings. Yeah. And what it does is that as the bolt is forced out, it compresses the rings, yeah. and then the rings pull it back. So they have to go into the center of the skull with that, yeah? Um, right it, here? It varies. No, with cattle, yeah. so... Um, it's, it's difficult to show you, like not on the head. Yeah. Um, but no, so it's basically. You can show on my head. That's okay. So it would be about here. Okay. So the top of the forehead. Yeah. Well, it would go from from ear to eye, and then ear to eye. So if you were cows, you would like have ears. So it has to go to pierce through their brain. Um, the whole the the way the that the stunning actually works is um when the bolt hits the skull. That causes a, a, a massive like ricochet through the brain, and that is affecting the rattling. Stones. Yeah. And when I was younger, I used to have my two pet pigs every year. My last two were Samson and Delilah, yeah. um, and I used them to clear a big um, area of scrubland for me to put in my vegetable patches. Yeah. Um, and I'd been to several other small abattoirs, um, and I was mortified with what I got back. You know, they've. Um, bandsawed up and chucked into a sack and and it was so destroying to think well I put so much time and effort and pride into mm. producing happy healthy good quality pigs and then that has just been shown no respect whatsoever that for me was really upsetting yeah um, and that's something that I'm wanting to you know that we here are wanting to change through here this is our, our pre-chill here today. Okay. So you guys wouldn't mind just pulling the door to behind you. Um, so this here is a South Devon steer that we, we slaughtered this afternoon. And this is the animal that I'll, I can show you this animal being slaughtered on the film. Okay. So you can see exactly how, how it all went. Yeah. Evil those trucks. Abs- pure evil. Where are the babies now? Where are those cows? being hacked up, stabbed. 
So where do the, where do you put all the heads and stuff? They all, we've got an incinerator okay. on site. Yeah. Um, so that it reduces like transport miles for waste and things like that. So yeah, we incinerate everything on site. That's considered category one animal byproducts. Okay. So it's for incineration only. And these were some pigs. This one unfortunately was a sow. Um, so this is a mother, a sow mother? Yes. Okay, a breeding um, so she was. Do you feel that it's a necessary thing? Yes. Like it's necessary, like what well, it's like, do you feel like it's needed? Yes. Like, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, not everyone is vegan. Mm. Um, not everyone is vegetarian. Mm. So to be the lesser of two evils, there has to be a better way of doing something. That's and we inherent. Feel like the, the, the lesser of two evils, but it's still not like... It's not a nice thing not to do. Good. Well, it's not. Do you, would you say that it's good or oh, like if the lesser of two evils? Obviously, you could torture and kill someone first, or you could, you know, nurture and kill someone first. Um, but do you think the act of killing can ever be considered like okay um, or good? That's a really tricky question because there are some methods that we all know, like kosher and unstun halal where you look at it and i personally i see that as barbaric that is my point I've witnessed of view. i've been in the sl uh, a slaughterhouse where they decapitate animals with it's, it's absolutely it's horrendous it's no hard, i know yeah. but it's to each individual's point of view like for me growing up on a farm mm. i've always been taught where there's livestock there's dead stock sometimes with animals you know things go wrong and i've always been taught that every animal has their purpose yeah um if you know we didn't eat meat then there wouldn't be any animals. Um, and so that's the way that we sort of look at it, is that they're here, there's, they've got a purpose, there's a job that has to be done, and I would much rather do it my way mm. in what I consider to be the kindest way possible, where the animals aren't aware, there's minimal stress, um, you know, and they're treated with respect and mm. dignity right up until the point of, of stunning where they're rendered unconscious prior to slaughter. Um, so they've all got, got names. So I see, we yeah, on the legs. Yeah, if you, won't, if you don't mind not filming oh, the not names. Oh, not the names, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, good um, idea. Yeah. But, you know, that's something that we do. They're not a barcode. Yeah. You know, we put the name of, of the customer because they're that person's property, you know, they're that. They um, they're essentially belong to, the, the animals belong to them. Yeah. 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 So we always, we, you know, a lot of places use barcodes or numbers or anything like that, yeah. but I think it's a much more personal it makes it more personal yeah. individualizes obviously we have different views on this yeah. but i see from contrast like torturing abusing someone more than necessary to you know then and just like treating them a lot, a lot better than other places do and killing them might settle something in your heart but the way i like the way i view it mm -hmm. is if it was me right and like let's just say there's there's two alternatives here that you see um torturing and killing them or offering them the best welfare possible and minimizing stress before you kill them. I always look at the third option, <laughs> which is like, is this really necessary? I mean, we can eat plant-based foods. I mean, the studies are showing that we don't need meat to be healthy or to survive. And you know, all of these environmental consequences of raising animals and the ethical implications of robbing someone of their life, no matter how nice we do it. And I put myself in the animal's position and I go, I would want option three. <laughs> Yeah, no, I understand yeah. that. This one, because she was so big, we actually um, shot her with a, um, a free bullet. Oh, really? Yeah, so that's why she's got such a big hole. Generally, the older they get, the thicker their heads become. I you know, see. Obviously, you know, they get thick bones. For every piece of evidence, there is an equal and opposite piece of contradicting evidence. So it's very difficult to say for definite, yes or no, and I think, um, you know they are they do have feelings um and they, you know they do have learned there's, behaviors there's someone in do you believe like when you look at an animal there's someone inside of there with their own unique no. personality you don't think there's oh, someone they've got in their there? own personalities yeah yeah but you don't think there's someone there of, well, of course. like an individual experiencing reality yes. similar yeah. to our but sentient what experience. i'm saying yeah. is that we as an educated person yeah we know what's going to happen but this animal has never experienced it or seen it or you know they've never heard anything like it for you yeah. so they don't associate 
anything with what is so going like a to child happen. would like it like the innocence of a child like they wouldn't like if you let a child somewhere yeah like, to be off. killed they wouldn't know well, no but it's like if yeah. you if you go on holiday and your child has never been in the swimming pool yeah. and you're out on holiday you're sat in the decking and next thing your child runs and jumps in the swimming pool you you, you know yeah. that that's dangerous they don't no because yeah. they've never seen it or encountered so it so they before. wouldn't know they're about to be killed if the setting was was right and they had no idea of it but the the child is still the child that that to take their life from them would still be like sort of robbing their someone of their existence so yeah i understand what you're saying yeah. but i think this is where we would vary very differently mm. um you know i understand they are living breathing sentient beings mm. but at the same time they're not it's, it's a misguided anthropomorphism where um, a person will imprint their emotions onto an animal, whereas realistically the animal's actions is only a learned behaviour. This one here, she's been made into sausages. Okay, so you do that on site yes. for them? Yeah. That's very interesting. Not many places do the whole process, no, slaughter. Actually, and my butchers are shop butchers. Yeah. So the quality of what they get back is not, like, as I said, with Samson and Delilah, when I got the meat back, and it was just literally everything was just in one bag and I was like yeah well, what is this bit yeah. you know, whereas what we do so we indiv individually hand cut so chops cut label um and then like leg of lamb leg of the leg we've got some lamb steaks there and this is what people are used to seeing but they don't they're not really used to seeing the whole no but that's why we actively encourage people to come and Look, Witness. So that, yeah, so that they know what happened. So from cattle in a herd environment, um, if you go round and you, you know, they, they will flock together because that's something that they've learned to do. Whereas people, you know, if you were to go, for example, um, you know, to go running through a crowd of people with a machine gun, everyone would scatter. You know, that kind of thing is it's for the livestock, it's a learned behaviour. And the same way as they people. avoid, they like a, a cow would avoid a machine gun just as much as oh, a human. Oh well, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's just an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Is it a learned behaviour? They have desire. Yeah. They have a desire to live, like you know, ca ca cows yes, and pigs a, and do a, like dogs. Instinct, yeah. Like, like let's just put it in the context of dogs, because I know it's a big bit of a jump from human child to cow, <laughs> but like in the context of dogs, like would you feel kind of? I mean, your feelings don't really tell you if it's moral or not, but with dogs, like. You know they're killing dogs in China. They're raising them for food. They're trying to, you know, they're farming dogs for consumption. You, be, you do you have a, any animals like a dog at home? Or? Yeah, yeah. Chris has met my dog you, in the office. What's your dog's name? Indy. Indy. Okay, yeah. Probably adorable. <laughs> <laughs> he is, but I'm biased. This is this is Indy. <laughs> hello, say hello to the camera. <laughs> this is Indy. You are so cute. <laughs> but you know, Indy's got a personality. Yeah. There's someone in there, like you know, that desires, you know. To live, yeah, and you would. Uh, 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 don't do that. Wait, that's naughty. What's he doing? Oh, he's like having a good old scratch oh. on the water drinker. Oh, okay. We've done that. This one we've had to repair it because one of the ones did that and ripped it oh, off the wall. Darling, <laughs> would you see a difference between your dog and the cows? Um, like, would you accept a humane slaughter for the dog if it wasn't necessary for survival? If or yeah, like, but like we do if the it, cows. If it was a situation where I would have to kill my dog or watch him starve to death, for example. Different context, yeah. Well, like if it was not, necessary. Not. When, when you think about in Australia, mm. with the amount of livestock having to be slaughtered very prematurely, or livestock that weren't ever destined for the meat chain, yeah. but they've had to be slaughtered because there's a lack of food. Um, mm. I would, That's true, I but they were bred, they were bred by yeah. the farmers, weren't they? They, they, they yeah. forcibly bred by the farmer. So if we stop the forcibly, so well, not forcible. forcibly. I'm sure if you stuck a ram in there, he wouldn't turn around and say, "Sorry, ladies, we're not really feeling oh, it." Oh well, I guess. But the, the, the human beings are breeding the, the animals into it, so we're creating the problem. We're Selectively solving it by breeding, yeah. yeah. So let's just say there was no necessity for dog flesh, you know, and we brought the dog in, your dog, to be, you know, more like ethically slaughtered. You would, you would have a problem with that, like a moral problem. I would because I formed an emotional Some attachment to, to that dog. Whereas, yeah. you know, if there was a situation where we were out and about and he got scared or, you know, someone turned around with food, he wouldn't think twice about going and wandering off with person with food. And that's because it's a behaviour. Yeah. It's a learned behaviour. This is what I am talking about when I talk about disconnect. Like most of the society are disconnected yeah, from... Yeah, a lot of people don't want to know. They don't want to meet... Beat the cow before they eat the burger. But no. I think 
think if, if I think if you want to eat meat responsibly, then I think you should be asking more questions. Do you think like Indy has moral value outside of the like your emotional attachment oh, to he Indy? Knows, he knows right and wrong. No, like no, I mean but like he just chooses intrinsic well moral, like in and of it's like Indy's like you outside of the picture. Does Indy have moral value? outside of your emotional attachment he to He wouldn't Indy. think twice. I, I, I have to take him out on a lead because he wouldn't think twice about chasing sheep and killing one. I mean, no, not, not that that not his instinct to, you know, but like Indy, would it be immoral outside of your emotional attachment to Indy to ethically kill Indy for no necessity? I'm not following. So like I'm asking like, because I asked you um, if it's moral to kill Indy in the same way these cows are killed for their flesh. But you said, no, because I have an emotional attachment to Indy, that's what gives Indy value, moral, yeah. moral value. But outside of your emotional attachment to Indy, just Indy, her, his or herself? Him. Him He's himself. It, yeah. Himself. Um, does he have his own moral value outside of you? Like just his sentience and... See, that's very tricky. It's a very, very difficult question. Very difficult. Because like an individual human being, like a small child, outside of the, 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 the parent's emotional attachment to that small child, there is an individual there that deserves moral treatment, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because... But then, yeah. at the same time, their personality doesn't really start to develop until they're, you know, sort of yeah. they're toddlers. And, and most of that is nurture rather than nature. So yeah, it's, learning it's, and... Yeah, yeah, so it's very much the same, you know, in the, um, you know, cattle, for example, like these cattle here, most of these will not be, you know, two years old. Um, so how much, you know, learning and... You know, they, they've been brought up in a herd environment rather than been raised as an, as an individual. Mm. Um, and I think that's the difference is that people, yes, we are um, sort of, you know, naturally in, in pairs or, you know, we like to be in a group, but we're more emotionally developed than animals. I mean, there's no way mm. of saying, you know, that animal is is, you know, feel it, he's crying because you know, his friend has died, or, you know, like... When, have you seen, when, have you seen pining cows on a dairy farm? Yes, I have. When, they yeah. take, when we take their calves from them. Yeah, Do you think that's an emotional at, response? But then at the same time, when you can leave those cattle mm. to run on and stay with them, and then, you know, give it another two months, and those cows will be fed up because they've got, you know, maybe another calf, or, you know, they're, they're fed up that... They think that that animal, their calf, is ready for weaning... And I've seen cows, you know, buff their calves away. They're like, no, you're grown up now, off you go. Um, and it's the same with sheep. I've seen sheep do Mum it. Mum kicked so. me out the house too when I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Nature but did it, but does you, have you a way of doing it. Do you agree that, that like, if you take a, cow, a calf away from a, a mother cow, they have an emotional like, bond that's broken? And they it's it's an a maternal, yeah, but a it, maternal bond? Yeah. Yes, there is a maternal yeah. bond, but most of that is hormones you'll find then once they've not seen or not suckled for two or three days, that's it. They, they, that emotional attachment, that tie is gone. And then they're with you know, the rest of their, their herd, be it with calves, if the calves are together, um, they will see that as, okay, this is my new family. This is where I'm safe. This is what I do. And it's the same as they will mm. move on. It's a bit like the same as um, animals in the wild. Mm. If, if a calf is killed by a lion, for example, um, then the, you know, the mother will move on and carry on with her herd because it's survival instinct. It's what they do. It's like food, reproduce, you know, it's survival. And they, yeah, I, 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 don't know, I think uh, animals are, are emotionally intelligent and like if their child is killed, they probably have some type of emotional response to that. If you do choose to buy meat from your local butcher rather than the supermarket, don't be afraid to go in and say, where is this from? Where was it reared? And if the butcher is a good butcher, they should be able to tell you. And if not, I would ask the question, why? Why not? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I'm just trying to like, get to the point where we're like, okay, like we have lots of things in common with animals, like there's sentience, you know, there's someone in there, you agree that there's different personalities. Indy has a personality. The pigs yeah. that you met that you couldn't kill had their own little personalities. Yeah. There's someone, there's an individual inside e uh, each of them. And, you know, there are better ways to kill someone. But for me, I wouldn't want to have my life robbed from me. And then we could sort of like debate on whether, 
you know, humans have more of a complex experience than, than animals. And, you know, I'm on board with that a lot, but there's also human beings that can't have uh, complex experiences as other human beings, you know, but we still wouldn't think it's moral to like kill them and eat them or whatever. And there has to be like some type of differentiating factor, like some type of real difference between human beings and animals to sort of, to, to say that killing animals is moral, but killing humans isn't, or killing a dog isn't, and there's sort of, mm. there's so many similarities that yeah. matter. So that's where sort of uh, we're yeah. at. Ethically. No, absolutely, and I understand that, but at the same time, you know, if you want to test that theory, you can go and stand in with those bullocks, and I don't think they'd give two hoots, to be honest. They don't care about me. Yeah, I know, but that doesn't, <laughs> they, don't, they might not be able to con uh, conceptualise, uh, you know, the same sort of moral system. Yeah, but then you're saying that they've got exactly the same, like, emotions not and the things same, like that as but people. We do have so do they have a moral obligation, like, you know, they, you know, if you go and walk in with them, they say, oh, do you know what, I'm sure he's a nice bloke, I'll leave him alone. So, because they don't have moral agency, I mean, they, they can't make moral decisions, and there's also like human beings Sorry, that Dad. there's also like human beings that can't make moral decisions as well. Like they might be, you know, yeah, they but might they're generally like locked up. But we one wouldn't way or we wouldn't other. harm them though because because they can't make moral decisions. Oh, no, you tell that to the Americans. It's just because we've got rid of hanging, haven't we? But I mean, like, Americans still have death row. I would still make a moral decision because I'm a moral agent. Even if someone else couldn't, I wouldn't say like because they can't make moral decisions, I should act immorally yeah, towards but them. Morals are individual so for example subjective us as members of society we turn around and say do you know what it's not okay to go and and you know gun someone down in the street or anything like that whereas for example a person on death row they might not think twice about it so you know they yeah. they would but then collect so, but so morals are individual an agreement and not everyone like, yeah. is not everyone is the same you know and this is something that we're trying to change is by educating people and saying look okay um if you want to eat meat, that's that's cool, that's fine, it's up to you. But you need to make an educated decision and a choice yeah. to see how that animal was looked after. Where was he born? How was he reared? How was he handled? And and so people, if 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 they if they if they choose to eat meat, yeah, they, they at least see the whole process. And you guys are willing to show people the process yeah. in here and say, look, if you're gonna eat the flesh of an animal, okay. This is what's going to happen. This is the reality of it. Yeah. And this is how we do it here. Yeah. Can we come in for a tour of the slaughterhouse, please, mate? So, are we allowed on the kill floor? Why won't they let us on the kill floor? It's supposed to be humane. I'm so surprised that they, they're so secretive. It's such a humane, ethical, you know, industry. Just a normal industry. A lot of people don't want to. A lot of people don't want to. They don't want to know what happens. What do you think about that? Um, I understand it because, like I said, there's a very common misconception about what happens that it's all blood and guts and gore and, yeah. and you know, animals stressed and traumatized, and that's that's what's portrayed to them. Do you think them. that's willful, like, ignorance? Like, they, they don't want to see it, or do you just understand yes. that it's hard for people? Yeah, no, both. Yeah, both. Okay, so can we see the um, CCTV footage? Yeah, sure. So, that's the first thing you do eh, is remove the head? Yeah. I guarantee you, if I wanted to tour any other, like a, let's just say like a crisps factory where they're cooking crisps, serving crisps to people, they'd have no problem me coming in for a tour. Something wrong going on in here and they know it. Okay, the public know it, it's just like, it's like an inherent feeling. It's like a, a feeling in your heart. You know there's something wrong going on in there. That's why it's so covered up, so hidden from the population. They don't show slaughterhouse footage on TV. 